Oats, in this episode of Know What You Eat, we are going to talk about the glycemic index or GI and glycemic load or GL of oats. Let's start with the glycemic index or GI of oats. Before that, let's do a mini quiz. What do you think is the glycemic index of oats? Write your answer in the comments section. Do you think oats are low GI? That is, having a GI of 55 or lower. Or do you think oats are medium GI? That is, having a GI of between 56 to 69. Or do you think oats are high GI? That is, having a GI of 70 or higher. Before I give you the answer, it would be great if you give it a guess and write down your answer in the comments section. That is the best way to learn and retain new information. Here's the answer. The glycemic index of oats can be low, medium or high. The GI of oats can vary from the high 40s, that is in the low GI range, to higher than 70, that is in the high GI range, depending on the type of oats used and how the oats are cooked. In general, the less processed type of oats such as oat groats and steel cut oats would generally have a lower GI than the more highly processed types of oats such as quick cook oats or instant rolled oats. With the less processed oats such as steel cut oats with a GI in the high 40s to low 50s range and the more highly processed instant oats having a glycemic index in the 70s or higher range. The glycemic index of various foods can be obtained from tests done, whether for commercial or scientific research purposes, at various GI testing laboratories around the world. So if you want to know the glycemic index of any foods, you can always get them from various websites or online databases that collate the results of all these GI tests. One good source for GI information is this very comprehensive database maintained by the University of Sydney. So, if you want to know the GI of any food that you're eating, you can get them from various websites or online databases. On the other hand, if you want to know the glycemic load of a particular serving of food that you're eating, you have to calculate it, provided you know the glycemic index of the food that you're eating and also the net carbohydrates in that serving of food that you're eating. For example, if you want to calculate the GL or glycemic load of a bowl of oatmeal made from 50 grams of instant oats, you will first need to know the GI of instant oats, which based on various databases online, it is around 80. Secondly, you will also need to know the net carbohydrates amount in grams in that serving of oatmeal, which in this case is about 24 grams. You can calculate the net carbohydrates by looking at the nutritional information of the oats that you are using. And in this particular example, I use the nutritional information of a particular brand of instant oats that I happen to have. And in this particular brand of instant oats, there are a total of 29 grams of carbohydrates in 50 grams of instant oats, of which 5 grams are fiber. So the net carbohydrates is 29 minus 5 giving you 24 grams. And with this information, we can calculate the glycemic load or GL of 50 grams of instant oats, which is the net carbohydrate content measured in grams multiplied by its glycemic index and divided by 100, which gives us a calculated glycemic load of 19, which would put it at the highest end of the medium glycemic load range. So, the glycemic index of oats ranges from the 40s to the 70s, with the less processed oats such as steel-cut oats having a lower GI range than the more highly processed instant oats. As for glycemic load of oats, it varies with the glycemic index of the oats and the amount of oats used, which in this specific example of a serving of oatmeal made from 50 grams of instant oats, we calculated the glycemic load to be around 19 which will put it at the highest end of the medium glycemic load range. Hope you have found this episode of Know What to Eat Useful.